Okay, so we're here at the pier at Huntington Beach. And this is where I got my electric XP 2.0 stolen. So, what I want to do is take a look and see if people have learned their lesson. So, this guy, Sondor e-bike, he has a U-lock but didn't use it and he just has a little cable lock. So that's not very good. And then I saw this couple, they went into the restaurant, um, Dukes, and all they got is this cable tie way in the back. And here's a couple of townies. Real pretty downy mid drive, very nice. And all they got is they got the chain. Notice right next the to each master other, padlock, locked that's in something that that's easily cut. Okay, so I know it's convenient to just use a cable tie, especially like this. This is actually how mine was stolen. I used a cable, I had a U lock, I actually didn't use the U lock around the frame itself, I just used the cable. And let me show you how quickly or what can happen when you lock your bike up this way. <sighs> Put that stuff away so it looks like I know what I'm doing. supposed to be here <sighs> take your time and and I am gone Hello and welcome to Random Things, this is Ty, and from the intro video, you saw that on Labor Day 2023, at the Huntington Beach Pier, there were a lot of people with their bikes, some expensive bikes, that were not locked up very well. And so, um, now full disclosure, I did not try to jack any of those bikes, right? It was meant to show you that there are a lot of bikes that were not properly secured or were kind of easy targets for thieves. But as far as I know, by the time I left, all those bikes were still there, okay? So they were lucky and that those bikes were not stolen. Now, in the video where I actually stole my own bike in front of Costco, that is from an earlier clip. And I made that um, video back in 2022 when my own electric XP 2.0 was stolen at that exact same pier with a lot of people there and I got complacent, right? I thought just because it was a lot of people, I did not lock my bike up properly and it was stolen. And so for this video, I want to talk about what is it that you can do to kind of make sure that you lock your bike up more secure? And two, what are some of the advancements and the better chains and locks out there that you can use to help better secure your bike? And three, what can you do to recover your bike if your bike in, is indeed stolen. So with that, first things first, it is not the pier's responsibility or City of Huntington Beach or Costco's responsibility to secure your bike. It is your responsibility. It was my responsibility, my own fault um, for being complacent. Now, ultimately, it was that jerk that stole my bike, but um, I take full responsibility. I could have did better right so what could i have done better well first and foremost um i could have used a better lock um, and there's been actually quite a bit of advancements in um, lock technology if you want to call it that um, since then now if you use um, a cheap combination cable chain lock and this one is from kryptonite um, it's i see these a lot um, I get it, it's very convenient, they're light, they're easy to use, but boy, I can cut that so fast with my um, bolt cutter. And I think that's kind of what happened to me. 
um, is I had a lock like this in combination with a U-lock that I did not use properly and they just cut my cable most likely with a bolt cutter. So again, what are some of the advances in um, lock technology or chain technology? For one, I no longer use cable locks. It's just way too easy to cut. And in fact, even heavy duty chain locks, because it's rounded, big bolt cutters can actually still cut through them. You know, like the 36 inch bad boy. Oh, right. Now, I'm specifically talking about um, F tools that are silent, right? I'm not talking about an angle grinder, right? An angle grinder will cut through any of these locks. The, the chain, the U-lock. Um, there's only really one lock that I, I've seen that is angle grinder proof. Um, it's like 300 bucks, so I actually don't have that. Um, but um, even these round, round chains, um, it can be cut. As you can see here, right? I used the 36 inch bolt cutter and I made two cuts, cut it off, and off that bike goes if it was locked up. Um, the second thing is if you use a cheap padlock, even if you have a beefy chain, right? If you use a cheap padlock, all I have to do is cut the padlock and not the chain. So make sure. You don't use a cheap padlock. Use a lock that is actually more cut resistant, right? Nothing is cut proof, just more cut resistant, okay? Now, let me get to these new links, new type of chains. These chains have, it's a square link. It's not a round link, right? It is a square link. And because it's square, bolt cutters have a harder time biting onto the metal okay, so it is harder um, for the bolt cutter to cut through square links um, now here i have two examples this is a abus um, quarter inch square link chain that is 10 foot long it's very convenient it's very long it lets me wrap it all around my bike um, and it's lighter because it's quarter inch but um, I was able to defeat that, right, with the bolt cutter. Not with a small one, something that I can carry in my backpack, but rather that 36 inch one with some leverage, I was able to cut um, the square link for the quarter inch. Now luckily, or um, luckily for me, I was not able to cut the 516. It looks more like 38, but on the website it's actually 516. I was not able to cut this particular chain because um, it was a little too beefy. Even for the 36 inch bolt cutter that has, I had it on the ground so I had maximum leverage. Um, and so now I won't use these cable chains. I will only use these heavy, heavy um, square link chains. And yeah, it's heavy, it's inconvenient, but as you can see from my Electric X Premium, I have a pannier bag. And so it's not that big of a deal for me to throw this into the pannier bag. That way I know that I always have something that is very secure, um, at least for the short term. Um, I'm not talking about leaving anything overnight. I'm more talking about stopping at the pier, going to have lunch um, with the family, and then coming back and knowing that my bike will most likely be there because There'll be somebody else that didn't watch this video and didn't lock up their bike properly, either with the right tools or just didn't do the right method. Um, the other thing that I carry on my bike is I use a combination square link lock from Kryptonite. So again, because of the square link, it's hard to defeat um, with a bolt cutter, but it still can be defeated with an angle grinder. Now, a couple other locks. Now this one is a audible U-lock, right? Meaning that this one actually has a motion lock, on, motion sensor on it. And so that once you lock your, your bike, 
um, it will actually alarm. You hear that single beep? That arms it, right? And so if there's motion, there's a warning. And let's say there's more motion. There it goes. There it goes. So hopefully that will scare the pants off the thief, right? And they will avoid your bike and move on to the other target, right? So this is a um, alarming type of U-lock, right? Um, here I have a bike disc lock, right? And so what this does is it actually clamps on to the disc brake rotor vent holes. And so um, there's a little slide action bolt in there. So once I lock it, right, the bolt goes through the vent holes and it locks there. To defeat it, um, I would have to cut it with a sawzall. Um, I can't get into that bolt with the bolt cutter. So it's not, but it's not foolproof. It can be defeated. You still can cut it. Um, this particular one also has a motion sensor on it. So there's a warning. Oh, right. So you can put that on your disc brake. What I do recommend is not go with one single type of lock, right? I, I would actually use a combination of locks, meaning that I would use this along with this. That way, um, the thief is going to have to do a lot of work to get to my bike, right? So they're going to find an easier target. The second thing is, um, besides using a multi-barrier approach, when you lock your bike up, you really need to do a very careful job of locking it up properly. Now, I'm going to put a link in the description box to a video um, that I made that talks about what I mean about locking it up properly. But basically, if you just use a cable lock, and then use the U-lock as basically a, a big padlock. And this is actually what secures your bike. That's wrong. Two, if you use a U-lock and you don't clamp it to something that is, um, I guess, easily cut. So in other words, let's say there's no parking and you decide to lock it against a chain link fence. But you went through the chain link fence and not the post. Well, guess what? I just have to cut the chain link fence, right? And if you didn't, especially if you were lazy and you didn't go through the tire, right? Then if I just cut the chain link fence, I can ride away with it. The U-lock will be hanging on my bike. But um, when I get home, I'll take the angle grinder out and cut it off, right? So you didn't use your lock properly. So make sure when you do get the lock, that you do use your lock properly. And lastly, um, like I said, if somebody really wants to steal your stuff, they're going to steal it, right? So what is some of the things that you can do to recover it? One is you should always register your bike, right? There's a serial number to every bike, and you should enter your bike into the bike registry. That way, if the cops ever find a thief with all these stolen bikes, right, they will go into the, the bike registry and punch in the serial number and see that who is the proper owner. So make sure you register your bike. A second thing is is you might be able to use or you might want to use an Apple AirTag. And what this is, is it uses crowd Bluetooth um, to kind of locate your device. Originally, it's designed to help you find your lost keys, right? Um, but you can use it to kind of track your, your bike. Now, um, you have to find a smart place to put it where it can actually still get signal to other people's phones including your own phone right um, for example some people talk about sticking it under the seat so here's the problem when it's under the seat um, it's easy for a thief to actually just remove your seat and throw your seat away right now it looks weird if somebody's riding down the boardwalk without a seat um, but that can be how they get rid of or get around your air tag so you're going to have to find a good place to hide your Apple AirTag. And I'm going to have a separate video to kind of show you where I hide my Apple AirTag. When I, obviously, once I show you, it's not 
a secret anymore, but it's a pain in the butt to get to. And so I feel very confident that, you know, you're not going to go and find it. You're not going to be able to find it very easily. Um, so that will be a separate video, and I'll put a link below um, when that video comes out. The other thing is um, the AirTag, there was some stalking issues related to AirTag, meaning like people were using it to stalk people and find out where they live. And so there is a feature within the AirTag that says that, hey, um, I have an AirTag that's near me that doesn't belong to me, and do you want to find it? And then when that pops up on my phone, on the thief zone, technically they can um, hit it, and it will set off an audible alarm for them to actually listen and look for it. Now, their one way to defeat that is to remove the speaker itself. But really, for that to work, um, they need to be around an air tag that doesn't belong to them for more than a day. So basically, you have a, a day um, to use your Apple air tag to find your bike. Hopefully, you're not out in the middle of sticks and you're in a popular area where there's a lot of different um, uh, people with Apple phones that can actually Bluetooth to it and then they will just send you a signal. Um, people with Apple phones, once they have Find My Phone on, that's one of those features that um, tracks these little devices. So you can install an Apple AirTag um, on your bike to kind of help you track down your, your bike. Now, I will say this with a caveat. What are you gonna do when you figure out where your bike is and it's in some dude's garage, right? Are you just gonna ring the doorbell? Uh, make sure you take the proper precautions, right? Get the authorities involved so that you don't put yourself in a dangerous situation um, and get yourself hurt, right? In the end, you know, a lot of times these bikes can be um, added to your homeowner's insurance and they'll be covered on the insurance if it does get stolen. And so, it's just money. It's not really worth your health. But on the principle of it, I'm getting my bike back. Um, so with that, I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, please hit the like and share button. If you're not a subscriber, please subscribe. That really helped me out. As always, I thank you for watching, and I'll see you on the next random video.